Hi there, Matt Wade here, and today we're going to cover a bit of a power user practice when presenting during a Microsoft Teams meeting, and that's making the most of having two screens at your disposal. There are a bunch of benefits to having multiple screens, but the main ones are being able to have one screen for sharing all of your content with everyone in your meeting while keeping everything else you need to see, like the attendees' faces and the meeting chat, maybe uh, some notes or other resources on the other screen. So let's dive in. If you're lucky enough to have two screens, you likely know how much of a difference they make. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Two monitors plugged into a computer, one laptop with a monitor connected, a laptop with a mobile screen plugged in, a laptop wirelessly connected to a tablet. Doesn't really matter how you do it. The second you add the extra screen, your potential increases dramatically and you're able to absorb and manage a lot more at the same time. Though it's also much more space for making a mess and losing your apps. So there's that. Multiple screens work especially well when presenting in a Microsoft Teams meeting. I almost never present in a Teams meeting without having a second screen. I'm absolutely jaded, I'll admit. The two screens let me bucket content into uh, my stuff and their stuff while I'm presenting. It avoids the inevitable awkwardness of bouncing around between windows when using only one screen. Consider all the extra stuff you see uh, when you use only one screen. The Windows taskbar or Mac OS doc, the menu bar at the top, the other apps that are open, the jumping around, and if you're using PowerPoint, it takes up your whole screen and you don't even get presenter view. Well, that is if you're not using my tip on how to present a PowerPoint deck correctly during a Teams meeting. Click up here to watch that video. While the second screen isn't a requirement for a productive Teams meeting, it definitely makes a difference. So here is a quick overview of how I use the two screens in a typical meeting where I'm presenting a topic or concept where I need to share information, but also keep tabs on the meeting itself. Managing your screens. There's a bunch of ways to connect multiple monitors, and I won't get into the nitty gritty there. You're on YouTube right now, and there are likely tens of thousands of videos that cover that already. One thing I will say is you want to be aware and well-practiced in how to manage the display layouts on your device. In Windows, you want to go to Start, Settings, Display. In Mac OS, Open System Preferences, Displays, Arrangement. From here, you can move them around and decide how they're laid out. I have to change mine frequently, though that's likely because I use one laptop at home and on the go, and always with at least one additional monitor, so sometimes my settings aren't exactly what I want. The point is, once you get things perfect, don't let yourself forget how to tweak them in the future. Set up the front of house. Think of sharing your screen as a stage. You're presenting things to an audience and you want that content to be clean, professional, and high quality. At least I generally do. It's a dedicated space for me to drop all the apps I might use when sharing them. Here are some tips for making the most of that screen during your meeting. Your shared screen should be your secondary monitor. The screen you present should always be the secondary screen. It should be the one that doesn't have the Windows taskbar or a Mac OS dock on it. That keeps it free of unnecessary buttons and interface distractions. It also means you won't see if I Alt-Tab, Command-Tab on Mac, between apps on the other screen, which is likely because Alt-Tab is one of the most useful computer tips for this situation and using your computer in general. Nor will you see notifications if you happen to forget to enable the Do Not Disturb mode in Windows or Mac OS, though you should of course enable Do Not Disturb when you're sharing your screen. You want to set up your screen to have your necessary windows open ahead of sharing if possible, uh, though feel free to keep other apps on your primary screen as a staging ground, of course. Just don't waste people's time by looking for apps or web pages live during the meeting if you can avoid it. Try to have them open, ready, and loaded to correct content. Split screen is really useful. Windows and Mac OS both offer a way to basically pin and split two apps on your window so they take up the whole space. You can use the included slider to adjust which app takes up more space. This is a great way to show off two apps in a clean way. I'll leave links covering how this works in Windows and Mac OS in the video description so you can look into it a little bit more. Make use of multiple desktops. Windows and Mac OS have a feature where you can expand an app into full screen mode and it creates a separate desktop. These are really useful because you can swipe between them quickly, Windows tab on Windows and four finger swipe on Mac OS, making various content accessible without cramming them all into one screen. I use this all the time to jump between what I need to show off. 
The multiple desktop concept aligns closely with the split view feature I mentioned before. You can create desktops that are combos of multiple apps, so you can jump between various related pairs of apps if it makes sense to do so. I'll leave links on how this works in Windows and Mac OS in the video description so you can look into it a little bit more. Use the built-in camera to show your face with your content. One downside to sharing your screen in Teams is your face is no longer prominent to the people you're presenting to. But you can use the built-in camera app in Windows or Chrome OS or QuickTime Player in Mac OS to show the live feed of your camera alongside your content. Check out my recent video for an in-depth overview of how to do that. Bring in mobile devices to sketch on your screen. If you have a mobile device, and let's be real, who doesn't these days, you can actually use Microsoft Whiteboard to sketch and write by opening the whiteboard on both your phone or tablet and in a browser on your presentation screen. So you can be writing notes and presenting them at the same time directly from your mobile device to your presentation screen to your meeting participants. Check out my recent video for an in-depth overview for the ins and outs of that. Sometimes your face should be primary, so unshare your screen when it makes sense. It's perfectly okay to jump between sharing and not sharing depending on the context of what you're talking about. Just like if you were presenting slides in the real world, sometimes the slides aren't relevant while you're talking through a story or a contextual tangent. In that case, people would pay attention to you. Pro tip, with PowerPoint, you can type W or B and the screen will turn white or black, respectively, so the slides don't distract people while you're talking. Press W or B again to return back to your slides. The same thing happens in online meetings. If you're talking about something that doesn't require the screen share, unshare your screen. Humans react more to other humans anyway, so they're probably like the break from seeing a screen. When you're ready to dive back into the content, just reshare your screen. I just hate it when I see people share their screen and then never leave the screen, even when there are plenty of times during the presentation when the screen has little to do with what the presenter is talking about. Hopping between your face and the screen isn't bad practice. In fact, it's good practice. Shake things up a bit and keep people awake. Set up the back of house. Your primary screen, the one that has your Windows taskbar or Mac OS dock, is the place where you'll keep all the apps you need to manage what you're presenting. First and foremost, this likely means the team's meeting itself. You wanna be able to see the meeting attendees and at least I find, most importantly, the meeting chat. Now that Teams meetings occur in a separate window, I pretty much immediately minimize the main Teams app once the meeting starts. There are two reasons for this. First is just to minimize the number of active windows I have, but the second and more infuriating reason is because, at least on Mac OS, when I click the Teams icon in the dock, the main Teams app window is what comes up first, which is literally the wrong window for me. The other thing I generally use for the primary monitor is taking notes. I generally use OneNote, but Plenty of people use Evernote or other note-taking apps. I like to split the Teams meeting and OneNote, so I manage questions, agreements, and other action items during the meeting while seeing the people in the meeting at the same time. Lastly, if you're presenting a PowerPoint deck in the regular mode, uh, the slide takes over the entire secondary monitor, and Presenter View, complete with its preview of the next slide, your slide notes, and a way to skip around to other slides, takes over your primary screen. That makes the primary screen really valuable to me so I can manage my presentation. If I need to jump between apps, say I want to check in on the meeting, for example, I'll use my trusty Alt-Tab, Command-Tab on Mac, to bring Teams to the forefront, then go back to PowerPoint to keep presenting. And let's be real, sometimes the meeting goes off into ridiculous tangents that I have no control over where attendees are discussing things. I'm usually talking to customers here, so I don't have the ability to stop. And I pull up Reddit or Twitter to pass the time. Don't act like you haven't done that yourself. As has been a theme with some of my more recent videos, this one isn't so much about teams as it is about the content you're working with. Two screens can make a huge difference in everyday work life, but it really shines when you're in a teams meeting and you're presenting and sharing your screen. With these tips, hopefully you can find some ways to improve how you share your screens. Just make sure you always select the right screen to share. And if you don't have a second monitor, consider investing in one. I'm not saying they're cheap per se but they're not nearly as expensive as they used to be. In fact, given the major switch to remote working and distance learning, you might be able to convince your employer to cover it or subsidize part of it. It never hurts to ask. Heck, maybe you have a monitor at your desk at work that's just sitting there not being used. Why not ask to borrow it? And if you have an iPad, you can actually use that as a second monitor for your Mac laptop already. Just look up Sidecar. 
It's one of those things where when you're spending money, you have to consider what you spend it on and how much influence it's going to have on your overall happiness. If you're working eight or nine hours a day in front of a monitor from home every day and getting that second monitor adds that much more value to your day or makes it that much easier, it very well could be worth the investment in that. Uh, or maybe you just cut back on something else. Maybe you don't get the, you know, the coffee every morning, that kind of thing. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If you have two monitors and you've been using them with Teams, I'd love to hear what else you've been doing to make the most of them. Got any tips, hacks that everybody else could hear? Leave them in the comments. And as always, a like and a subscribe is much appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and happy juggling of your screens.